exposed ignorance is dangerous. It is dangerous to the Jews. It is dangerous to Israel. It is dangerous to the world. It is dangerous to the United States. It is dangerous to you and your soul, quite frankly. I've told you, as Israel goes, so goes the Western world. They are the keystone to freedom in the Middle East. If they fall, we all fall. Tonight, I'm going to show you history. I've got less than an hour now, so we're going to have to race through this program. But you need to have some perspective on where this hatred has come from. Please pardon the sloppiness, because we're going to cover, we're going to cover 2,000 years quickly. Um, but I urge you to do your own homework and look these things up for yourself. People tend to forget that our society is based on the history of the Jews. When you go to the Supreme Court building, try looking up. You'll see this over the door. You will see a row of the world's lawgivers. Right in the middle is Moses, and he is holding the Ten Commandments. Moses is also featured in the House chamber, where the president gives his State of the Union address. The Statue of Liberty, most people think she's wearing a crown, but she's not wearing a crown. If you've ever been over to, um, or you've seen um, Michelangelo's Moses, he's carved him with horns. That's because of a mistranslation of the scriptures. It's not horns, it's rays of light. This isn't a crown, this is the rays of the sun or the rays of light coming from behind her. The tablets in her arms represent the moment Moses descends Mount Sinai with the Ten Commandments. It's the law and the ray of light from God on her head. There's a quote from Moses on the Liberty Bell. The Pennsylvania Assembly chose, Proclaim liberty throughout the land to all the inhabitants thereof. That's from Leviticus. It's on the Liberty Bell. Jefferson, Franklin, John Adams led a committee designed um, uh, to come up with the seal of the United States. You've seen the seal of the United States a million times, but this isn't what they originally designed. The original design was this. It was Moses leading the Israelites across the Red Sea with a pillar of fire keeping the Pharaoh at bay. Around the seal, it doesn't say e pluribus unum. It says rebellion to tyrants is obedience to God. That's our original seal. And they all center around Exodus and Moses. These are just a few examples of the influence that Moses has had on us. There are many, many more. It is impossible to argue that we are indeed a Judeo-Christian country. Given the spectacular results of basing a country on those principles and values, most people are cool with that. Most people now are growing apathetic, however, and they're like, whatever. Because we're too far removed from the types of religious oppression of the Founders' era. And we are too far removed from the religious oppression that is happening currently in the Middle East. As we sleep, those vocal few who don't like freedom of religion have made progress. And they have worked feverishly to fundamentally transform America. But they haven't. If you change, if you fundamentally transform America, the greatest country ever created in the history of the planet... You should clearly explain to people what you plan to change to. What are you going to change into? But nobody has done that. It's just change. And that's what's happening in the Middle East. Well, what does that change mean? No one is willing to lay that out for you. No one's willing that, to lay that out for the American people, not even the president. I will. I have. And I will continue tonight. The science is settled. We are a Judeo-Christian society. The argument is whether we will remain a Judeo-Christian society that not only tolerates but embraces and protects all other points of view so long as you are not trying to blow things or people up. That is what is at question. Will we remain that country? Tonight, the history of the hatred in the Middle East. And I want you to know that there is hatred from all religions, all sides. Everybody has a little bit of blood on their hands here. We are talking about 5,000 years of history. There are no sacred cows, but there also are no accusations historically tonight. Only what is happening on the ground today. And again, the question is not who has blood on their hands in the past. The question is, will we put fresh blood on our hands today? It all starts in Syria. 70, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 175 to uh, 163 B.C. 
who was the king of Syria. He was the first to try and outlaw Judaism. He was, um, he was angry. He thought people, uh, Jews, were the reason his people were opposing his policies. So he started making all kinds of laws, such as outlawing the Sabbath and circumcision, which was inter interesting when I was reading this last night because what a coincidence. In San Francisco, this November, they're actually voting on banning circumcision. Huh. We'll get back to that later. We have the Crusades that were killing the Christians and the Jews and the Muslims. We have that. It was, it was an awful bloody time. In 1215, Pope Innocent III decreed that Jews should wear a solid yellow circle sewn into an upper garment. He said, Jews are doomed to wander about the earth as fugitives and vagabonds, and their faces must be covered with shame. Remember the yellow circle. In 1240, King Louis IX ordered the Talmud be put on trial in Paris and ended up burning thousands of copies of it. He ordered the expulsion of many Jews and confiscated their lands for his use. In 1290, King Edward expelled uh, the Jews from England. 1306, 1394, Jews were kicked out of France. 1394, Jews expelled from Hungary. 1421, they're kicked out of Austria. You seeing a pattern? 1492. 200,000 Jews were expelled from Spain when Columbus were sailing the ocean blue. The reason? They were afraid Jews would taint newly converted Christians. 1445 to 1495, same thing was happening in Lithuania. Pattern. You got it? 1497, the Jews are expelled from Portugal. This time is also the time that marked the start of Jews not being permitted at all in Russia for 200 years. 1543, Martin Luther. This is the guy who fundamentally changed Christianity, but he's also the guy that penned the Jews and their lies. His recommendation was for violence, burning synagogues, destroying their homes, confiscating Jewish holy books, confiscating property, forcing physical labor, and expelling the Jews. Many argue that Hitler who did call Luther a great reformer, was inspired by Luther. If a prominent religious leader such as Luther made it acceptable to hate Jews, imagine how widespread this was. Ask yourself this question. If you didn't know this part of history, why didn't you know this part of history? By the way, footnote, later the Lutheran Church renounced those views, but many argue that Hitler used them to legitimize his own ideas, but Hitler was crazy. 1555, Jews in Italy, forced into ghettos. Remember the yellow circle? This time they're made to wear yellow hats outside of the ghetto. In 1648, 100,000 Jews are killed in the Ukraine. Up until 1772, Jews weren't permitted in Russia. And then we get to 1925, Mein Kampf. Hitler. But it wasn't just in Germany. This disease, again, we all have blood on our hands spreads to the United States. In 1939, the St. Louis shows up. This is a German ship carrying Jewish refugees. It was denied entry into the U.S. We wouldn't take them. We turned the ship around, knowing that they were headed towards their death. By 1945, somebody had effectively tried to exterminate the Jews. Oh, Hitler was very effective. 67% of all European Jews were murdered. Nearly 6 million out of 8.8 .8 million. Think of this, America, because that was done without any real technology. Imagine an uprising now. Imagine these kinds of ideas with full GPS and other state-of-the-art technologies. How would anyone escape that, or even better? If you're all gathered in one place, like Israel, and somebody wants to vaporize you because Allah says it's your job to vaporize, imagine what could be done. Crazy? Watch this. Okay. We all know what Hitler did, even though people like Ahmadinejad deny what Hitler did. But I want to show you what else was happening around the same time 
mainly in the Middle East. It's gone under the radar for some unknown reason, and it explains almost everything you see in the Middle East. It explains why they want to drive the Jews into the sea. It explains why they say the Holocaust never happened. By the end of this program, my hope is, the only thing that will remain unexplained in your mind is why the world, who promised never ever again, doesn't see the old hatreds brewing once again. Or if they do see, I mean, I don't know how you can miss the protest and the chance of Jew, Jew, Jew. If they do see, why don't they care?